right here still in the studio with me is Nana Ohininto. Nana Ohininto is a key member of the movement for uh, Nana. So we we're talking. Mm. I mean, the last time I saw you, yes, that was in August last year. I mean, you had come to the MPP headquarters to vote mm -hmm. in the super delegates right. conference. I wanted to engage you and said I wanted to vote, and then we'll come back to ah, me. Well, I mean, the next day I saw you, you had crossed from yes. <laughs> the MPP, the party you served mm -hmm. as a chief executive officer of the party mm -hmm. to now join with Alan Chemantem mm -hmm. will be able for unseating the very party that uh, gave you your political, uh, you know, uh, uh, passport. And I'm so wondering why you would take such a bold decision. We will come to the revolutionary, you know, agenda that you have put forth. But I just want to understand this first. But I, I think you... You raised the question, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy you say you want to understand, because mm -hmm. there is a certain kind of misunderstanding. Right. First of all, the objective with which Alan and some of us left the MPP mm -hmm. to support Alan's course, the Movement for Change, is not about unseating MPP necessarily, mm -hmm. but presenting Ghanaians with a more viable alternative. And the ultimate so goal will in be. the process, mm -hmm. MPP and NDC may happen to be casualties. But that is not really the issue. The issue is that the duopoly has worked to the disadvantage of the nation on the whole. Mm. And that we needed to make a major change. Uh, those who would know me uh, since I was growing up in the system, from the media into academia, into politics. People would know me as someone who has always stood for certain kinds of principles, right. no matter what the environment, mm. no matter what the establishment thinks. Once I am convinced that this, in my view, looking at all the odds available, this is probably the most reasonable option to take. Mm. I just stand by it. In Rollins' uh, revolution, so-called, I was in the public media. Mm -hmm. Those who were in the media with me at the time, some of them felt I had gone insane mm. by openly criticizing Jerry Rollins in those revolutionary days. Right. Of course, after so many years, a lot of my own colleagues will now tell me, hmm, some of the things you were saying, we were not bold enough to, say it. to talk about them. But you were, you were quite right. Mm. So you see, it takes, and I'm, I'm happy you mentioned, it takes a lot of guts, it takes a lot of courage to stand for your own convictions, especially if on balance, it turns out that these are principles that to a very large extent will be to the benefit of not just you mm. as an individual, but even a larger group or even the larger society, the whole party, the whole family, the whole nation, Kind of. So that has been my approach to public service. Mm -hmm. That's been my approach to politics. When I was in the media, that is exactly how I practiced journalism. Right. I remember very well. Mm -hmm. I was on a lot of um, uh, investigative and private interview programs, interviews with specialists, people of very high standing, mm -hmm. very deep knowledge and experience and so on. And in the process, I learned a lot. I dealt with all manner of issues, national, global. Mm -hmm. Now, especially on the national issues, one day I had been hosting Talking Point for quite some time. On GTV. On GTV. And I had been doing special interviews and I had been doing special documentaries on particular subject areas. Mm -hmm. Sanitation, health, education, agriculture, industry, expo anything, politics. So one day I went to my boss, and there was an issue. Every year, we had an issue with Alajo floods, rainy season, Alajo floods. Which we, which we are still experiencing in a way. But, but I don't think what I'm it, talking it, it, about is what used to be those days. Mm -hmm. Alajo floods, post-harvest losses, when there is a bamfa harvest. And we, we, don't know, we don't know where to store them, and then it, it goes bad. And I will do a documentary and I will do an interview, and I will do a panel discussion year after year. year. So one day I went to my boss. I said, I said, Chief, I'm worried about something. He said, what is it? He said, ah. I said, two years ago, we discussed post-harvest losses. 
Last year, we discussed post-harvest losses. This year, we are discussing post-harvest losses. So what happens to all the discussions and the programs that we do on TV? What happens to the policy makers and policy enforcers? Don't they listen to us? Mm -hmm. I am very sorry to say. My boss asked me, so is that your problem? I said, yes. He said, ah, how, how can you make this your problem? Ours is to speak. Whether they will take it or not. It's up to them. That is up to them. So if you feel frustrated and you want to stop doing the interviews, you can stop. I was so disappointed. Well, that but of, co of course. Because I thought we could reconnect with some of these policy makers and draw them into the studio and ask them. Three years ago, we discussed poor harvest losses. Yes. Two years ago, we discussed poor harvest losses. Last year, we discussed poor harvest losses. This year, we are discussing post harvest losses. Mm -hmm. And you are in charge. So that somebody will say that this guy is not competent. Let's just drop him. My boss felt we were extending the, the conversation to cover areas to, that were not part of the original. Exactly. Part. So some of these things have been part of some oh, of us. Mm. So if I have served NPP, now, let me even tell you this. Before MPP was formed, I was in the media mm -hmm. in the 70, late 70s, into the 80s especially, and into the 90s. At that time, MPP had not been formed. But some of us were fighting for the ideals for which MPP stood for mm -hmm. then. And we knew that if any political party would advocate for the rule of law, any party would advocate for private enterprise, private initiative, mm -hmm. liberty of speech, freedom of speech and expression. That for me is a good one. Right. And then I get to serve this party into President Kufo's government. And then the leadership changes. And you can see the value system of this party going downhill in terms of its own upholding of the, the, the party's own principles, the principles rule of law, yes. uh, the party constitution mm -hmm. will be flouted by party top echelons. And, and, and they will give you excuses. And they would give you, when it suits certain people, major critical provisions of the constitution mm -hmm. will be set aside to the extent that sometimes I found it really worrying because it was as if now, the constitution may be there. Once the National Council, with certain influences, decide on something, it overrides constitution. And things like that, I mean, really, where are the values that I had been fighting for? Uh, and you for say it? that the, yeah. the, 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 this systemic decline started after two, 2008? Well, I cannot pinpoint the period, but you could see a certain transitional period. Okay. Yes. So for me, it's a question of principle. If the principles that I think I stood for are no more being respected to the extent that I think should be, I think I'm at liberty in any case. On the same principles. Yeah, yeah, of course. So really, for me, aside. it wasn't difficult. Of course, the party announced that I had been sacked, basically. Right. And I thought, since they had quoted the party's constitution, and I respected the party's constitution, they had done the right thing by saying that once I have gone to support Alan Chamating, they ought to sack me. And I also have done the right thing. Did you get a formal communication from the party? No, it was in the media. And well, for me, that's neither here nor okay. there. It has been announced anyway, publicly. Today, we're not, we're not here yes. to talk about party. So you, you've taken this movement a step further. Yes. You call this Alliance for Revolutionary Change. Change. It doesn't revolutionary. That does not sound undemocratic. Revolutionary? The word of it. The word revolutionary. Revolutionary only means radical. I mean, I mean in this country, we, we, we become used to so, revolutionary see, this is, this is, in the context of, but, you know. But the word is not a Ghanaian word. Right. It's not only in our context that we apply the word revolution. I think I understand what you're saying. Right. But the whole idea is that Ghana is in such a state now. We have practiced our democracy, especially in the Fourth Republic, 32 years now. Mm. We've basically been going around in circles in terms of economic development, in terms of improving our governance systems, in terms of improving our public sector, in terms of improving private sector business and enterprise, in terms of agriculture, everything that you can think about, infrastructure development, 
everything is basically stagnated. And we talk about growth. Sometimes we can talk about growth of one point something percent, two percent. You know, and we are talking about a situation where at the macroeconomy level, as we speak today, truth be told, Ghana is bankrupt. If you owe and you cannot pay your creditors, the bankers call you bankrupt. Basically. I'm not a banker, mm -hmm. but I think this is commonsensical. Now, this kind of situation has been cyclical, especially after independence. Mm -hmm. Since we became independent, before President Nkrumah left, Ghana was already owing. Before the First Republic ended. And we have never been able to break that cycle of indebtedness. Indeed, it is getting so bad as we speak today, debt to GDP ratio is closing in on 70%. Exactly. And, and, and isn't that scary? Now, if you want to change that situation, mm -hmm. that change cannot be gradual. It's got to be transformative. It's got to be radical. It's got to be revolutionary. So, so no, no, that is the, why the, 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 we need to condition our minds for change that is truly radical. Otherwise, we'll be in this vicious cycle for God knows how long. And you blame this on leadership? Leadership, Absolutely. leadership you've been part of in, in past? Listen to me. When you bunch up the issues, you can't do the analysis properly. Mm -hmm. When you talk about leadership, I have been telling people that we have a multi-party democracy, but the party is different from government. The constitution of Ghana gives power to the president of Ghana. Right. The president of Ghana may have come from a political party to become president. Mm -hmm. Once you become president, the power that the constitution of Ghana gives to the president is not given to a political party. So if I am general secretary of a party mm -hmm. and the president of Ghana is from MPP, and the president's government commits certain mistakes. Mm. Maybe on the political platform, people may talk about the party. Yes. But I am telling you technically, right. and realistically, and practically, you can have the same party producing two different governments, like Kufo and Kufuado from MPP. Anybody who cannot see the difference between how Kufo managed the economy of Ghana, mm -hmm and how Kufuado and his government have managed the economy of Ghana may simply not be honest. They have assigned so, so, reasons so, why we, no, are, so by, by we, what, are, we are where we are But now. I'm telling you, the point is that mm -hmm. the issue is not about the political party. It's about the individual. It is about the individual who has and holds the reins of power, who decides finally how the nation goes in terms of economy, in terms of education, in terms of infrastructure, and all of that. So if you say you were part of that leadership, technically, it really doesn't make sense. Mm. So, so President Kufo was responsible. We may go to the elections and see how he performed and say, oh, this party did well. But critically speaking, the president, the individual, is where the buck stops. And I think President Kufo has shown even the MPP that the buck stops not with the party, but with, but with the president. Exactly. When his own MPs, MPP MPs, made all the noise in the world about removal of Finance Minister of Foriata, President said, I'm not going to remove him. Until his own time, the party couldn't do anything. So in that sense, I think we need to make that dichotomy when we want to analyze the issues properly and understand our own predicament and what is the real diagnosis of our political governance, economic development situation, and then what is the way forward? And what have you I identified think, for, for, from your point of view? I am and what should be you, the way forward? I am telling you that leadership is number one. What is the competence of that leader? What is the character of that leader? And, 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 and what is the, comp uh, the, the credibility and of the reference, that leader? And the reference you, you make to leadership is about the individual. The individual. Okay. Because that is what it is. I am not the one saying it. You understand? From the same NDC, we saw Jerry Rawlings, we saw Atamils, we saw John Mama, three different types of governments. Everybody's own individual style. So that is what it boils down to. That is why 
people should not even worry so much. Especially we are, now that we are faced with the current situation, mm. people should not bother so much about party. Because after all, once that individual president takes over, the party is not the issue. So of the three top names, I have said it, and I'm sure everybody would agree with me. Alan Chamate, John Mama, and Baumia, one of them will become president by the end of the elections this year. Clearly. That one is self-evident. Mm. So I am saying, let us focus on these three individuals. Check their own track record in every area that they have worked until now. Mm. Check it against the current situation where Ghana finds ourselves. And then determine which one of these three, not based on political party. Because look, but, if I, wait a second, wait, okay, wait, wait a second. Okay. If Alan were still in MPP, mm -hmm. I would support Alan in MPP because it is Alan. Because individually, I have analyzed him. But, but again, if, if, your reference, out, Nana, if your reference is to the leader, yes. in this case, the president, yes. and you are putting these three individuals on the scale, yes. uh, Dr. Muhammad Baumia, yes. John Mahama, yes. and Alan Kwajo Shemantin, yes. then obviously it's only John Mahama we can really assess him because he's been there. He's been at the very top. The rest, the, the other two, Dr. Baumia and Alan, they are yet to get there. You're absolutely and right. So, I mean, because you made You're reference to the wrong. individual Can I at, at the very top, please Can go I answer on. your question? The Constitution of Ghana says that if somebody goes for a presidential election and get, has a running mate, mm -hmm. once the president is elected, the running mate is also deemed to have been elected. Right. That's the first thing. If you're a minister, you are appointed by the president, he can keep you in place. He can sack you. The, the same way it can be done for the, the vice president. The president can never sack, no way. The president can never sack a vice president. No. You have no power. The person was deemed to have been elected like yourself. So if anything, it has to be by impeachment. So in this case, you're, you're putting yeah. the two together. No, no, but not I. The law, the constitution. Listen carefully. Uh, the, no, the reference about the leadership is what is bringing about finished, this conversation. I haven't Please finished go on. my point. Right. If you allow me, then I'll make my point. Please go on. Yes. So that's the first thing. Second thing, if the president of Ghana travels outside of Ghana for one minute, it is the vice president who takes over by law, by mm -hmm. constitution. Yes. So if anybody tells me that that office cannot be held jointly responsible, I find it very difficult to understand. Because, you see, and let me go further down, a little bit below the constitution now. When President Kufuado he was candidate, I was general secretary then, wanted Dr. Baumia to be his running mate. The party flatly rejected it. Why? Dr. Baumia was not a member of MPP. Mm -hmm. He didn't even have a membership card. The constitution of the MPP says that you have to be a member of at least five years right. in good standing. Then you can run for running mate or presidential candidate. Parliamentary is two years. Baumia didn't have any of these. The party hierarchy stood up and said, this is a no, no, no. And yet? Candidate Akufa continued pleading and pleading and everybody was saying no. The one thing I believe that broke the, 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 the camel's back, he said, listen, I am not an economist. The economy is number one for everybody. This gentleman here has such expertise in economy economic policy, economic thinking, economic direction. If you people allow me to bring him on board as running mate, once I'm president, he's going to be vice president. He will be directly in charge of the economy and you people will see the kind of work that Baumia will do for the nation. So please, of course, if, you are, told, mind. if you are told something like this, would you risk losing that kind of thing? But you had so, economy, people yeah, with the same background in the party, and but, yes, they were overlooked. But, so if that was but, a but, overriding but, principle... Can, but, but can I finish? <laughs> but that was what the presidential candidate... Actually, what President Kufour said at that time was that, look, it is true the Constitution really doesn't permit this. But what the candidate is also saying is quite a sensitive matter. Let's be very careful we don't regret in the future. Mm -hmm. If really this is what it is, and... Dr. Baumia had been made governor, deputy governor of Bank of Ghana. So it was presumed that, I mean, at that high level, mm -hmm. if what the presidential candidate is saying is that I'm going to hand him the economy. And incidentally, 
it has become conventional that the vice president is, becomes a, is a chair of the economic management, of the management team. team. Now, as we speak, Dr. Bahamian doesn't want to talk about the economy. In fact, he would tell you that his own logic that when the fundamentals are wrong, the exchange rate would expose you. The exchange rate has gone wrong now. Now he says, anybody who would say that since the exchange rate has gone wrong, the fundamentals are wrong, it has warped thinking. I mean, this is really difficult for us to understand. Mm. So you see, Dr. Baumia had a certain kind of opportunity that a minister, I dare say, a mere minister, can never come close. So if you get this picture and say that, oh, Alan Chamartin also had the opportunity as vice president, as head of the economic management team, as the number two person who automatically, constitutionally, takes over as soon as the number one man is not there for even one minute. So that point is neither here nor there. So, so, so this, this attempt to revolutionize our politics and to break this geopoly, what is the plan going for? Is it a case that Alan is going to be the, the, the candidate to be partnered? Alan is the candidate. So, the, and, the then, has already and then agreed. Abu Sakara's role will be what? We haven't discussed that. Mm -hmm. We are in talks for a broad alliance. Now, let me explain the alliance. Mm -hmm. First thing, you know the name. Alliance for Revolutionary Change. And I think I have tried to explain to you why that word red revolutionary, radical change, is what Ghana needs now. And I've given you a bit of background. We haven't gone so deep, mm -hmm. but at least we have a certain sense of where we've come from. And in the Fourth Republic, how we've been going around in circles for 32 years, no real change. We haven't had a breakthrough. And the need for Ghana to have an economic and governance breakthrough. Now, the alliance is focusing on change that will not be just gradual. Because that's what we've been trying to do. Mm -hmm. Growth. Economic growth, which can go up and down. But when you begin to change the very structure of your economy, mm -hmm. You are not just growing, your economy is being transformed. We'll come to the details of it, which is all out here. I, I, I just want to understand yeah. the plan. Yes. And how that plan is different from what we've been used to. All right. I'll give you a microcosm of that plan. And that microcosm is what Alan initiated. Alan present, under present before. Alan was made trade and industry minister. And then he went to President Kofu and said, uh, can I suggest something, Mr. President, if you agree? He said, go ahead. He said, I want to add something that you can call President Special Initiatives. Mm -hmm. Select four growth pools. Let us put some investment in there, some direction, some concerted energy, and see how that can transform, not just allow growth, but transform. Oil palm. Mm -hmm. Cassava starch, right. garments, and salt. So the president agreed, and Alan initiated this. Of course, this was during the second term of uh, Alan came last year of President Kufo's first term, in the first three years. Before this, that, he was ambassador to the United States. Of yes, America. exactly. And then he initiated these projects, and of course, left midway 2007 to go contest the presidential. Mm -hmm. But before he left office, he had put together a plan for the garment sector through the free zones. Ghanaian manufacturers of clothing were getting orders to the United States market tariff-free, which they could not meet. So now you realize that that initiative has a huge potential to change, transform. Mm. Salt. Today, there are people who have become billionaires taking it off from PSI salt. Today, those who even went into oil palm, to a certain extent, and unfortunately, that PSI was not sustained by the NDC government that took over 2008 for the next eight years. They didn't. Mm -hmm. So the impetus that had been put there was slowed down. But even then, today, when you go to Eastern region, Ashanti region especially, I had a chance to tour some of the places where PSI oil palm projects took off. And I was shown Nana Jabin in his own plantation coming out of PSI. I said, wow. Kazava starch, as we speak now, Ayenzu starch, 
Zoom Lion owns 70% of it. Mm -hmm. You think he's a foolish businessman. People are saying he failed. When Guinness is taking the starch from Ayunsu starch to produce cassava beer, when pharmaceutical companies, when textile companies are buying industrial starch, you understand? Right. So now come fast forward to Akufuado's government, one district, Alan, one factory. as minister. One district, one factory now is one of the key messages that MPP as a party can take. Alan's initiative, which Akufuado agreed to, the president had to agree because the back stops with him. And these are the, the same things you the, want to do the, into, in Listen, the, listen. Alan came and initiated one district, one factory. It didn't end there. He said, Mr. President, we need 10 strategic anchor industries which will now begin to grow and change the very structure of our economy. One of them is the automobile sector. As we speak today, six or so, seven, six of some of the, the seven of the top most automobile companies have set up assembly plants in Ghana. This economy. You think such companies will just decide to come and set up without any clear blueprint in terms of policy, in terms of future development and so on. This was Alan Chamatin's initiative. And, th and this happened th under a president you think has failed. If a president had not given no, Alan no. the buy-in. I'm not sure all the things you are talking when about. You are, would have when you are assessing it. a president, you don't assess his government only on one industry, trade and industry sector. We're talking about the totality of governance. But clearly... We're talking, you, Why? What we're you, doing is that you want to do you want to do advocacy for no no, no, but, no absolutely not. Uh -huh, but, but, okay. you so are let clearly, me understand you. You are clearly picking and choosing. Yeah. Which one suits you? No, but what I say, <laughs> if it is not correct, tell me what I'm telling you. If it is not factual, you can point it out to me. You are talking about Alan Chamatin, mm -hmm. and all the things I'm talking to you about are about Alan Chamatin, and you are saying I'm picking and choosing. So what should I do? I shouldn't pick and choose. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm not saying so, that. So, but my point is that uh, this. Alan's achievement, which yes. we're highlighting, yes. sits in the overall performance of the government. But I am telling you that it is the initiative of an individual member of that government as a minister. Now, if that person becomes the number one person, look, every president chooses their focus. Mm. came, his focus, macroeconomic stability, social services. So Kufuor did whatever he could to stabilize the economy before he left. Mm. He set up the National Health Insurance Scheme. He set up child and maternal care, and a number of things. Did a few infrastructure projects, which were very, very significant. But his key focus, a proof of comes, his focus, he says, free SHS for the first term. Mm. And then he comes second term. Now we are looking at a mixture of so many things. You understand? So if you are president, you have that prerogative and that constitutional power to choose which areas you want to invest your, the, the bulk of your national uh, revenue. Mm. If you are not the president and you suggest something really, really smart to the president, the president said, well, thank you very much, Mr. Chemartin, but uh, that is not my focus. What are you going to do? Now, now we, we are wrapping up. So in yes. going forward, yes. what should happen, for example, from tomorrow with this alliance? Yes. And what is the plan as we look to... Uh, December 7th. Are we going to have people contest as parliamentary candidates on the ticket of this alliance? Is that going, are you going to open it up? To, I mean, t t can you, can you give me if you can questions? give me the sequence. Now, if you give me your questions, in sequence, if you give me the sequence, so, so, so which one? So, for example, question, yes. what is happening tomorrow? Uh, what is happening when? I'm talking about the alliance. We are going, we are going ahead of the December 7th election. Yes. What is the plan happening from now to December? Okay. The alliance discussions have been going on for a couple of months now, the movement for change led by Honorable Alan Chamartin, the national interest movement led by Dr. Abu Sakara, which also is a coalition of political entities and individuals, mm -hmm. and some other smaller political parties, we have already come to an agreement and practically signed a memo of understanding forming this alliance. Mm -hmm. Two, discussions with other interested groups and individuals and political uh, entities is still going on as we speak. Three, the alliance is going to be launched formally on the 17th of April. 
in Accra. Mm. And you ask about parliamentary exactly. candidates. Exactly. Of course, individuals choose whether they want to go contest an election as independent. We will check their interests. We will check their objectives and visions. If they talk to us and we we'll check them and we realize that indeed it, it goes the to your plans. line, the outline and the vision that Alan has put out for Ghana, where he wants to transform agriculture, transform the macroeconomy, transform infrastructure, transform the basic pillars. They agree with this. Why not? We will support them. But the actual and overarching objective is that mm -hmm. that duopoly of MPP and DC, that has been so divisive, in fact, toxic to our development, ought to be broken. And that it is not serving the interest of Ghana best. Right. So it is time for all Ghanaians to consider that we need a government led by a very competent person, Alan's track record, I can roll it out for you. A very honest and credible person because now some of the things that are lacking in leadership is dishonest and hypocritical leadership. And we are wrapping up your final words. So I, I am appealing to <laughs> all of Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. Please let us look at our current situation. Let us look at what we're in now, economically, socially, in terms of government, and what we aspire to. And check what Alan Chamating is presenting to us, his track record, his background, his credibility, his honesty, his competence. If a man is able to put together a whole architecture for the economy of Africa, trade and industry for the whole continent of Africa, he is capable and has all that it takes to help change Ghana, transform Ghana for the better. So please support Alan, the alliance, and the movement for change. And Ghana will take a new direction of which we will all be proud. Thank Prouder you. than we have been. Thank you so much. Nano Hilinto is a leading member of the movement for change and now uh, the Alliance for Revol Revolutionary change. change. All right.